Radio Sankara. Tutti i colori del mondo. Tutti i colori del mondo. Tutti i colori del mondo. Radio Sankara. Tutti i colori del mondo. Radio Sankara. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Radio Sankara International. We are here today to talk about the situation in Palestine with Amanda Sade. Uh, yes, Amanda uh, is with us from Palestine. Uh, she is graduate from Goldsmiths University and uh, she n- uh, currently works for the Institute for uh, Middle East Understanding. Uh, um, Amanda, how are you and can you tell us about Uh, the Institute and what you do. Hi, um, yeah, so thank you first of all for having me on. So, uh, like I said, my name is Amanda Sade and I work for the Institute for Middle East Understanding, or the IMEU for short. And we're a non-profit um, Palestinian-American organization based uh, both in the U.S. and in Palestine. And our work is focused around centering Palestinian voices, both in mainstream media and the work that we do online so like if you follow us on or you can follow us on instagram and twitter and facebook and our primary goal is to center palestinian voices um whether it's about politics culture art activism um and then we do the same thing in the u.s as well where we work with journalists and try and give them information about palestine and if they want to do interviews with people say it's a journalist who wants to write about Palestine, we make sure that we're giving them Palestinian resources and Palestinian sources to talk to so that our voices are always centered. This is very, this is very good. And thank you for being with us. Um, we ask you to join us because we would like to know um, what's going on, you know, uh, over there. And so can you tell us what happened uh, and, uh, uh, of course, what's going on at the moment? Yeah, so uh, what's happening right now is the culmination of 73 years of of settler colonialism in one little microcosm, basically. So you have this this neighborhood in Jerusalem called Sheikh Jarrah, and it's a Palestinian neighborhood that uh, in East Jerusalem, which East Jerusalem is under the Palestinian Authority, and so Israel doesn't have any legal jurisdiction there. But slowly, um, you hear, I don't know how familiar people are with, with East Jerusalem, but it's an area slowly being um, taken over by illegal settlers, and Palestinian land is often um, taken from there, and their international community doesn't do anything really about it. Um, even though it is illegal under international law. But uh, so Sheikh Jarrah is this neighborhood that has slowly been, um, uh, people have slowly been losing their homes there. So there's eviction notice. And you say eviction, or the international community says eviction, but we don't uh, acknowledge the word eviction because there is no legal authority there. It's forced displacement, it's ethnic cleansing. So the neighborhood is being um, taken over slowly, slowly, and uh, people are being dispossessed from their homes. And now there is an order for six families to be um, dispossessed from their homes. And there was a court hearing that has now been um, postponed given the circumstances. And so people in this neighborhood are, are protesting, they're fighting back, they do not want... Uh, to be dispossessed from their homes from illegal Israeli settlers who will, by the way, take their homes. So they will be, the Palestinians there will lose their homes and Israeli settlers will move into their homes. So it's it's settler colonialism 101. But since then, we've seen um, an uproar and protests all over, not just in the West Bank, not just in Jerusalem, but we see it with Palestinians that live in Israel protesting in cities like Haifa and Arqqa. And there has been um, a response of violence from the Israeli soldiers and uh, Israeli regime. So you see that Palestinians don't have any army. We don't have any sort of um, um, way to defend ourselves besides, you know, what you see is us resisting um, just in our daily life. Um, and then I don't know if also you saw what was happening in Al-Aqsa compound, settlers broken um, there and during the holiest month of Ramadan. And actually today is Eid, so it's uh, the last day of Ramadan. 
Yes. So we've seen all this happening and on different fronts in different cities, and uh, um, the response from the international community has been pretty absent. And so about the international community, what do you think about the response? It's absent. Uh, has it even been wrong in some ways? I mean, so I'm Palestinian American. I'm born and raised in the U.S. And my whole life, I've never seen the U.S. do or say anything. Uh, President Biden's response was Israel has the right to defend itself. And us Palestinians are sitting here saying defend themselves from what? You know, they're the ones with power, with resources. Israel has the one of the best and greatest armies in the world backed by the U.S. And mm-hmm. the U.S. gives $3.8 billion dollars in aid a year. So when I think about the, at least the response from the U.S., it's not surprising to me. Um, and uh, But there have been some some Congress people like um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, um, like Buddy McCollum, like Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, very progressives like Bernie Sanders, and they do condemn. So at least on the U.S. front, like that's that's what we're seeing is kind of the, the status quo um, from the the president and from the the democratic government and the republican government um internationally like um i am seeing like a lot of solidarity within civil society i haven't seen um uh you know i don't expect governments to to be on the the palestinian side and understand why we are resisting we always look like the ones that are the ones that started it you know Palestinians threw stones, so we had to bomb them. It's like, okay, there's, there's the, there's the, there's not an equal power dynamic here, but um, that's what I see. Uh, but I did want to know what the response in Italy was. <laughs> yeah, thank you for asking us. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, actually, we can tell that the international community has been silent about it and is quite. Uh, sad let's say Mm -mm. um Uh, the response in italy uh well as you say same as uh as what you were talking about the political response has been uh well biased towards israel the civil well obviously the people we know (laughs) are very pro-palestine but maybe we don't have quite a pulse of the general situation Um, Well, I have been seen uh, mostly on uh, social media, which is uh, actually a great way, as we know, Um, on Instagram. A lot of like uh, um, Italian uh, uh, activists, uh, uh, very young ones, uh, and they are supporting uh, Palestine. They are uh, Muslim Italian and this is not only actually. um, And this is very um, great uh, and we are very happy. There will be uh, a lot of uh, demonstration and support uh, uh, and solidarity with the uh, uh, Palestinian people uh, on Saturday and Sunday in uh, a lot of uh, Italian cities and uh, we will be there of course uh, so uh, we do whatever we can <laughs> um, yeah. actually and um, about the way that we perceive uh, the um, Palestinian issues, the question of Palestine, Palestine um, I would like to ask you what we can do about uh, talk about what's going on in a fair way. You know, words are very important when we talk about what's going on is also very important the way we uh, tell people what's going on. So what we can do to have a fairer narrative, uh, we, we've been hearing a lot about, oh, there have been clashes uh, in uh, uh, Palestine, but there are no clashes. You were talking about, you know, colonial uh, power, and that's what the we should be talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. I think, um, I don't know if you saw Mohammed Al-Kurd, he's uh, an activist uh, in Sheikh Jarrah. He's actually one of the families uh, who will be forcibly removed from their homes. Um, and someone on CNN asked him a question. They asked him about eviction. They said, oh, how are you responding, you know, to, to what's happening? And she used the word eviction. And he said, first of all, like, this is not an eviction because an eviction requires exactly. a landlord and we don't have a landlord. We own our homes. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so I think the number one word that we're hearing all over is eviction. We hear clashes. And I think you'll appreciate this, Claudia, but I told someone the only clash I want to hear about is the band The Clash, because these aren't, <laughs> these aren't, these aren't clashes, you know? This is 
um, a Western-backed power with advanced military technology and resources and endless um, endless um, supply of ammunition and tear gas and whatever else they need to use to attack us and to disperse, you know, uh, Palestinian protesters. But that's what we were up against. Is it's not a clash. It's not. It's not. It's you know. It's a settler colonial attack on people. It's ethnic cleansing. It's yes. um, it's Western backed imperialism. And these are the words. You know, it's apartheid. And uh, Human Rights Watch just finally put out a report, 213 pages of research of why Israel does practice apartheid. And, um, and we've been saying this, you know, Palestinians have been saying it's apartheid, we've been saying it's ethnic cleansing. Um, you know, it's nice to have international NGOs finally acknowledge it, but it's not new for us at the same time. But um, just, a, yeah, choice of words, you know, like what the words mean when we say eviction, when we say clashes, when we say you know, Palestinian demonstrators. Like, what is a Palestinian demonstrator? We're, a, we're civilians protesting our right to, to live freely in our homes, you know? Exactly, definitely. Yeah, this is very important, and I think it's something that we can do to, you know, raise awareness about people. We need to talk to people. We need to let them know what's going on in a fair way, which is not easy since, uh, as we were talking before, Western media doesn't... Uh, uh, give us a, you know, a clear picture of uh, what's uh, what's going on, right? Right. Yeah. Um. I was looking at the uh, the news, and there was an article published about um, you know, the violence on both sides. You know, like uh, Israelis, uh, they're they're launching rockets into Gaza. Gaza responds and launches a rocket into Tel Aviv, and um, the photo, I, the photo contrast. The there was a photo story. And they showed the rocket damage that happened in Tel Aviv. And there was a woman crying with a puppy, you know, holding her dog and covering mm -hmm. her ears because there were loud sirens. And the sirens hurt her and her dog, you know. And then you go and you look at the photos of what's happening in Gaza. And you have 14 um, children who have been killed, you know. Yes. And Awful. where is the international response? I think Ned Price, he's... Um, the American, uh, he's a spokesperson for the American government, and they asked him, why don't you condemn uh, these killings? And he couldn't respond. He couldn't respond to, it's not okay to kill children. And that's, uh, it's a stark difference that we see. So when we say, like, oh, on both sides, we need to end the bombing and ending mm -hmm. violence, but there's one power that's a lot stronger, and uh, it is, um, it's not a fair or equal playing field. They have an army that's now, um, they've deployed ground forces into a Palestinian um, village in Israel called the Lid. And um, it's, you see the photos and it's a full, it's an army with endless uh, resources and, and, you know, their riot gear against Palestinian protesters. That's the, That's what we're looking at. Yeah, it's definitely unfair. Like, uh, and so, you know, the balance of power, we definitely know <laughs> that is uh, yeah, very yeah. unequal. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's... It's, um, um, it's, it's... And the media makes it out to look like it's the same thing, you know? Exactly, like, um, which is not. And Sheikh Jarrah is just, you know, it's, um, it's, not, it's nothing new for us. Sheikh Jarrah is what happened to many Palestinian villages in Israel, you know? Um, The, the Israeli state was founded 73 years ago, and they found it based on the same principles that they're doing with Sheikh Jarrah. Hmm. There's villages near my village. My village is in the, the northern Galilee, which is very close to the border of Lebanon. And surrounding villages are destroyed. My village was one of them that happened to not be destroyed in the Nakba, or the catastrophe, as we call it, in 1948. Mm -hmm. But you go to, to the beach... Um, I'm 10 minutes away from the beach, and there's a village. It was called Lazib, which is completely destroyed. And you just see people playing on the beach and, you know, throwing their ball around with a destroyed village right next to them. And they see it as, you know, they don't understand what it was. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's the goal for, for Israel, is to make the rest of the country, like, Sheikh Jarrah and, like, what they've done 73 years before. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Amanda. Your testimony was really precious. As you said, as the work you are doing is about uh, centering uh, Palestinian voices in the narrative, I think uh, the fact that you um, spoke to us has been really precious. 
and we hope yeah. that your voice will arrive as far and wide as possible just to give us yeah thank you thank you for having me and um please uh, sh- follow and share the imeu um mm-hmm. it's at the imeu on instagram and i can also send through a lot of other pages um by palestinian activists that should be shared and followed for more information if you'd like yes definitely we will uh, spread uh, uh, the word and uh, um definitely to all of uh, um, our audience to follow uh, the Institute for Middle East Understanding on Instagram and uh, give us whatever you you can to yeah whatever uh, sources help us. you can exactly mm-hmm. we need to give voice to whoever mm-hmm. has no voice <laughs> yeah. so it's very it's very important uh, uh, for us for you for everyone. <laughs> Um, yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. It was amazing to having you, and uh, uh, we are so grateful for your voice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be able to speak. Okay. Thank you so much, Amanda. And Ciao good luck Italy. for everything. And good luck. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is this was Amanda Sade, which gave us her testimony from Palestine. And thank you. We are very grateful to her. And uh, um, so, and this concludes the first episode of Radio Sankara International. Thank you so much for listening. I hope we gave you something to think about. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye. Tutti i colori del mondo. Radio Sankara. Tutti i colori del mondo. Radio Sankara.